Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, it's Friday, September 17th, 2021, here in uh, Gratuville. Welcome back to the Friday edition of Gratu After Dark. Um, we're going to have quite a exciting episode this evening. I think I got this hat, as far as I can determine, maybe right before second grade. And I think I might have gotten it in a Stuckies. Look at this. Brilliant design. It's got a little weird lizard decorating the hat. Um, Stuckies was a great store. Damn, this phone's too far away. Where's a better place to put this phone? Let's see. Maybe what if I put you right here? How'd that be? So I'm trying to put you on top of this tiki god and against this lamp, but I don't know about that. How about... Next to this 45 RPM record player. Oh, okay. oh, what a dilemma. Well, what a day. Uh, I, um, I mowed the front yard and the side yards because uh, I'm not supposed to do that, but the bums across the street let their uh, weeds grow up literally three feet. I mean, they were up to my hips. And I thought, well, as long as their yard's ridiculously long, no one's going to complain about me. My yard looks relatively okay compared to those scum. Well, today they hired some people to mow it, and so did the other bums next to them. So I, I got to go mow the lawn, because uh, what am I going to do? So, um, I went to an estate sale yesterday, spent about 10 or $11. If I had more money, there were 1950s cowboy pistol, uh, you know, cap, pistol, cap guns, and there were uh, Roy Rogers, little kids books, and 45 RPM records and stuff. Uh, it looked like it was, uh, well, from what I understand, I overheard the lady running the estate sale, and she said that um, there were so many mid-century mid clothes, you know, 50s clothes, and she said, I told the lady that for whom the estate sale is being thrown is alive. She's 77, and, uh, and she, the estate sale lady said, you have the the award for the most gloves and she says honey those were my mother's so apparently there were a lot of uh, Jackie O style you know 50s gloves there at the estate so but um, so you get to see all the, the the toys there were some trains and stuff from a kid growing up in the 50s and then you see her 1957 uh, letter jacket from Hillsboro High School. So you figure, okay, this is a girl that, you know, one of the girls was listening to Elvis in the early days of rock and roll. And it's, uh, so you realize, okay, so those people, those, those kids that were listening to the early days of rock and roll are now, you know, pushing 80. And, uh, you know, like Roy Thomas, he's like 80. He was born in, or, something like that. He was born in 1940, I think. And yeah, I always think of him as this young guy. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, um, oh, I got a few things. I got a couple of cigar boxes that I'm going to fill. And I, uh, oh, I got a, cu a couple of books. And uh, what's the other thing I got? It'll come to me in a minute, but uh, I, I went back because they only took cash, so I had to pull out like ten dollars and had her hold a little stack for me, and uh, and uh, any, anyway, when I, 
I'll show you. Here's one thing I got. Uh, this lady's husband was apparently a pilot and a mason. It's like I got this uh, book, the, the Laws of the Grand Lodge of Texas. I don't think you're supposed to have this if you're not a mason, but I paid $5 for it. Oh, I went back. I was going to get this cool antique mirror with this woman. I don't think she was a mermaid, but it was just very antique. Uh, it had to be from 1900 or so. I was going to go get that for my wife, but uh, it was gone by the time I went back. But let's see. Uh, let's take a look at this book. Uh, this is this. It's it's the property of the. I'm not gonna say his name. Junior warden for the year 1963 through 64. So anyway, this is all the secrets, I guess, of uh, how they um, conduct their business in the Masonic lodges. Um, the state sales are kind of weird uh, in that. Uh, they're little, they're fun, but they're a little melancholy too. Um, sometimes you go into a state sale and the person was like really cool and they have amazing things. And sometimes uh, it's like someone that in their entire lifetime didn't accumulate a single object that you would want. But this was a pretty good estate sale. Um, they had, she had some speakers that were six feet tall in the master bedroom that said they were custom speakers they were a hundred dollars for the pair but i don't have that kind of money i shouldn't have even spent this money um oh i'll show you the cigar boxes i got um i'm gonna i, I keep these cigar boxes and put little knickknacks in them so that um so it's you know you got uh, these two boxes, they're identical for Roitan cigars. They're, uh, they're really cool, really cool uh, looking. So I got two of these. And I think I'm gonna put these Jack Chick tracks in them, in one of them. Because I, I, they're everywhere, these Jack Chick tracks. So that's uh, what I'm gonna do here at the beginning of this video this evening. Um, well, I'm I'm giving up Coke. I'm just gonna drink Dr Pepper because uh, Dr Pepper is. Uh, if you watch the news, you'll know why Coca Cola has been making some really uh, wrong political decisions lately, and Dr Pepper is apparently. Um, being a lot cooler about it. Um, anyway, so I just mowed the lawn and sweaty, and I got the uh, oh, Gerald's coming over, uh, and uh, he's uh, fixed my video projector. He said it looked like maybe a power surge had fried it some little component in it. and that might be what's happening with our dryer too the clothes dryer is not working and uh, we have insurance that covers appliances like that they'll either fix it or they'll replace it but we got to have $125 deductible well, I don't have that much money so that's why I shouldn't have been buying even ten eleven dollars at this estate so but uh, yeah, we gotta get our dryer fixed because I'm drying clothes in the backyard like it was like it's 1950. So I don't know, I don't have a clothesline. I'm just uh, we got this inflatable chair and this inflatable kiddie pool in the backyard, and I'm just laying the clothes on this inflatable chair until they dry. So. Apparently next Friday, about this time next Friday, they're going to be releasing the results in a live stream of uh, all these uh, recounts in Arizona. So that, who knows what will happen as uh, to divert our attention from that. I was just in the supermarket getting some kitty litter and some water and, and, and almost... Uh, I'd say 50% of the water was sold out. They only had this one brand. Uh, 
and uh, a lot of the drinks are gone. Uh, Captain Strange Life is right. There seems to be a run on the Topo Chico. I did manage to find a 12 pack of them. Uh, but a lot of the drinks are gone for a, super, a lot of Gatorade like the whole aisle of Gatorade's gone It's just weird baby wipes. Those were real. Those are kind of scarce just like they were at the beginning of the great uh, Great flu fad um, So And there's already a shortage of uh, comic book bags and and uh, any anything plastic is uh, all kinds of weird things. We're having shortages. Okay, I, I'm holding this fucking phone like a moron. Let me get this over. All right. So cigar box. Here's a uh, boo. This would apparently be something telling us that uh, Halloween is. Uh, bad thing it didn't didn't seem like it used to be Halloween used to be fun but now if you go in these spirit stores I never even bother anymore spirit is a horrible store it uh it has uh it's just a, it's just nothing but people with chainsaws and hooks going through eyes and it's all this gore stuff I don't care about that what is this Here's Bad Bob. I don't know if you want to see all these. God damn. That was good. The phone fell. Uh, you've seen these. This is an anti Dungeons and Dragons one. The Beast. That's probably very. Uh, well, let's see how much, how close it is to what's going on now. So they're talking, you know, I hear more and more about getting rid of the dollar and having it all be electronic. Ooh, they got a great illustration of the Battle of Armageddon. Oh, well, Florida, there's a medicine for uh, um, the stuff that's going around, and the administration has decided that Florida doesn't deserve that medicine because they're being naughty. So they're going to give it to some, to be equitable, they'll give it to other states because they don't think that the, they don't like the governor of Florida. How about, how about that? Here's another copy of Boo. All right. Here's an anti-heavy metal one. Angels. But you know, this is the one. They're different artists, but the main artist, I think it might be Jack Chick himself, is this guy. He has a very distinctive style. I, I like his art. I've done a, I've done a video on these before. I don't know if you guys uh, watch any of my old videos, but you know there was a kid in third or fourth grade that would get these at his church, and he'd trade them or sell them to us at the on the playground because you know it's look at that gore, and uh, and they were real scary. You know they 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 really scare you and. Uh, and then they have little things in them, like uh, and this. The sergeant's got these pinups on the wall behind him. So there was one he wouldn't trade to anybody because it was about exorcism, and it was back about the time the exorcist came out. And he says, "I can't, I can't give that to anybody." But, but yeah, um, there's a famous one. Let me see. I'll show you the most famous ones. There aren't these ones. Uh, I 
I've got more somewhere, man. These aren't my whole collection, I know. Oh, this is a famous one, A Demon's Nightmare. I've got a couple of copies of that. It has really cool artwork. But the most famous ones Well, the most, there was, there's one, the first one I think I saw was called Big Daddy, and it was an anti-evolution one. Oh, this is the, this is the, this is like the big one, This Was Your Life. That's probably the most famous one. Um, yeah, this is not my whole collection, because I'm not seeing Big Daddy. And, I, uh, and I'm not seeing uh, the one with the little kid that, dies on the street and then gets uh, raptured up. I don't see that one. Anyway, that stuff, I can put it somewhere safe. Uh, okay. Here's a photograph that I found somewhere. No relative of mine, but I'll put it in the other box. I'll start putting photos in the other box. She is now a relative of mine. Because I, I adopt orphaned uh, photographs. Here's a picture of me in, I don't know, third or fourth grade. How about that? Oh, okay. All right, well, let's put these over here. Yeah, the news is very concerning. I would say over the next couple of weeks that you need to be very alert to what's going on and, uh, and stock up on essentials. All right, so I'm in here going through Silver Age comics. I don't know how long my back's going to hold up. If I could just get this box a little higher up, I wouldn't have to bend over quite as much. Look at that. Put that over there. Okay, let's see what I can do. Move these Atari 2600 cartridges over here. shouldn't have mowed that lawn. At least I got the room in there ready for Gerald already, so I don't have that over my head. Mm. Oh, here's some books. I don't even know how they, where these came from. What the hell? these come from? It's uh, the Secret Avengers. I, I have no idea where these books came from, why they're here. Fantastic Four, 358. These need to be in the other room with the uh, Bronze Age and more recent. Here's the Heroines Showcase, number 16. It's like a wraparound cover. It's got a Barbarella cover. It's, um, it's a fanzine. Where I got it, probably at the old Lone Star Comics.
See if you got a centerfold. Alright. Here's a key issue. Michelle Bachman. It's her first appearance in comics. Look, see, it's got her secret origin, how she was born. A bunch of Avengers comics. I think. Yeah. Here's Avengers 180. Avengers 187. Look, it's. Uh, see that star? That's a. That means it's gonna. Uh, see, it has the Mark Jeweler supplement in it. Okay, that's the big thing that everybody loves. Some people love, at least. To me, it's just normal because uh, I bought tons of comics that had Mark Jewelers supplements because my dad was in the army we were always shopping at the px i was always over in the comic books and magazines and record sections while everybody was shopping at the px Okay, this is an adult Wolverine comic. So, uh, that means there's going to be lots of blood, you know. And probably some uh, no other naughty things, like Wolverine in bed with a girl. It's basically an R-rated comic. thought it was an important autograph, but it isn't. It's an autograph for the guy that sent me these uh, cardboard uh, Aurora promotional uh, things, the replicas that he created. That, but uh, anyway, this is uh, the way they would send you comics. Marvel stopped folding the comics and started sending them, I guess, in a plastic bag with this card if you subscribe. This is someone in Yuba City, California. I just found this, and so I thought it's an interesting curiosity. Oh, I was listening to uh, Lance Jones's Facebook broadcast last evening, and uh, he's now able to do, he, he went on uh, where he uploads his books several times a day or once a, you know, he always creates multiple books a week and he found there's now an option for those uh, books he does to be printed in hardcover for like an extra $9. But he has to reformat each book to, to be, because he has to lay out the pages slightly different, so. But, uh, it's not something, you know. Big to look forward to. Here's uh, DC Comics presents Superman meeting Commandy. Yeah, how about that? And, uh, some other comics. I think I showed these to you already. I don't know why they're out. I don't even know. But they need to be filed in the other room. I already got the other room all ready for Gerald. He's coming over. He stays here every Friday evening. So, I don't know if you're not a regular viewer of this channel. They, they. I, I went in. I was in agony, and I, I had a pinched nerve, and uh, so I went to the chiropractor, and uh, and uh, they uh, they said I really shouldn't be lifting more than five pounds. 
But uh, what is a comic box way that's filled with comics? Uh, probably a lot more than five pounds. What would you say, about 20? You guys keep taking a fall. You guys are clumsy. Hold on. One second. Okay, I think we're back in business. Maybe this this lamb will stable the. There we go. All right. Let's see what we got here in this box. There's a flash 135. It's a coverless flash. Well, really, what I'm looking for is uh, yeah, I'm pulling Charlton and Gold Key. You know, that was my new decision. So I, I've got these two issues. Really like this uh, design. Uh, this uh, that's a. Uh, the man called Flintstone. It's a James. It's Fred Flintstone as James Bond, and I always liked the design of that character there. So we're um, gonna pull this because we're pulling out Gold Key and and Charlton. I guess I'll pull out King also. So here's a. King Flash Gordon, another one. And then Charlton. Okay, what else? Ooh. I guess I'm pulling Dell. Yeah. I wish I had this last Wednesday for maybe someone showed this. I still haven't gotten back and watched the well, I watched the very beginning, but I haven't seen the whole episode yet of Wednesday because I was late. So and then here's Forbidden Worlds with Herbie. Here's another Forbidden Worlds. Isn't that a great cover? It's uh, number 145. Okay, so Fox and I've got lots of Fox and the Crow. Um, here's Foxhole. Fractured Fairy Tales. So that's Gold Key, Dell. 
Frankenstein. He's Del. Frankenstein is a superhero. Frankenstein Jr. I'm gonna I'm pulling like the whole box out. This is maybe a bad decision. Fruit Man. This is a special issue of Fruit Man. Oh, from beyond the unknown. Wish I'd had gone through this box before Wednesday's show. G8, isn't that great? G8 and the Battle Aces were a great old uh, get, um, pulp. Man, I'm pulling out every title. <sighs> Ghostly title. of ghostly tale a bunch of charlton ghostly tales ghost manor oh that's a great cover ghost record. i'll show these all to you and, and later i've shown them before i guarantee you i have but i wouldn't be able to tell you the episode number this is it's creating more of a hassle Maybe I should, uh, yeah, this is going to be a hassle. I may want to uh, wait on this. Yeah, until I have a place to put them. Yeah. Hawkman, oh, more Herb, all my Herbie comics. Then I have these books. Let's see if there's any books here that are... I have a bunch of books I need to put into these boxes. This is a Classics Illustrated Junior, The Magic Picture. So I need to... That'll go with... Where would I put the Classics Illustrated? I've got a really bad condition copy of Millie the Model number 175 it's got a dr great drive-in cover problem is this the the it got damaged at the bottom like being uh, in a box Bef not by me but by the previous owner <sighs> okay Marvel and DC I need to leave out here. Oh, here's uh, X-Men 22. Not in great shape, but it's got nice... The red is nice. like the floating heads it's an x-men i don't have i have a lot of kind of early x-men because it was a comic that was somewhat easy to collect in the, the 70s the the um those 60s x-men's weren't that expensive what was really expensive in the late 70s at comic stores were like Sp the Amazing Spider-Man and Silver Surfer, but you could buy Thor comics and Fantastic Four comics from the 60s in good condition for affordable prices. So that's what I was doing. So I've got a somewhat respectable collection of them. Um, okay, what else do I have here? Just stuff I've got to, I pulled out to read that I got to refile. Spider Man and Man Wolf. Wow. 
I like this music. You think I'm mad, don't you? <laughs> this is a Hulk uh, annual number six. Once before the cocoon opened to unleash Adam Warlock, but what lurks within it now is the question. What's coming out? Perhaps Joe Biden. Something horrible. Something beyond belief. Ah, this is some uh, Phoenix, the untold story. They reprint some of the X-Men comics I already have, but then they add a few pages at the end, like a, like a director's cut or something. But like where the director goes back at a later date and... and uh, Add scenes, you know. That's what this is. <clears throat> Here's some graphic novel that has Spider Man and Doctor Strange. Tell me, I don't know. I've never seen it before. Is it going to be fun to read? The Way to Dusty Death. It's with a title like The Way to Dusty Death, it's got to be fun, huh? I don't know if I already have these or not. It's uh, Aven Adventure 468, and it's got a it's got a, a cool Starman story that's drawn by Steve Ditko, and it's got a Plastic Man story. There's 470, same deal. The origin of Starman. Are we, I'm trying to figure if my wife and I are caught up on Stargirl. Um, no, we have one more episode to watch. We're many weeks behind on Titans. We're a whole season behind on Doom Patrol. We've never even attempted to watch shows that people are, I hear people talking about Invincible. Is that any good? I, I've never even read the comic. We're a season behind on Umbrella Academy. We watched the whole first season of The Boys, and I had no real interest to see the second season. Even though I like that actor from Supernatural, I could see him being a good uh, superhero type. It's just... I don't know, that show is just... Me. I like this... Swamp Thing and War Comic Pastiche. <clears throat> Just stuff I got pulled to read. Batman's being helpful and being a gentleman. <clears throat> there was a trailer. I, I, I haven't I just watched, but I didn't. I had the sound turned off on my phone. Steven Spielberg's doing a new uh, West Side Story, and I, I, I had, I was in a hamburger restaurant waiting uh, called Mr. B's. They have pretty good hamburgers there. I was waiting to, uh, waiting for my order, and I, I turned, the, I had the sound turned off. I gotta watch that to see how that looks. There's uh, some Warlord. I'm trying to complete my run of Warlord. I've got to get it all together so I see what I already have so I don't keep buying the same stuff over and over again. And the Warlord is kind of like uh, John Carter, Edgar Rice Burroughs kind of thing. Oh, that Tarzan show that was pretty good from... Uh, I mean, there were some episodes that weren't too good, but... Uh, it was in the late 90s, around 96, they had a Tarzan show, and they had, uh, like, Law of Opar, and they had David Ennis. They, they, I think they, if the show had gone more to a second season, they might have had John Carter in it, because they had a toy line based on that TV show, and the John Car they made a John Carter figure and a 
a, a Tars Tarkas, and I think a Dacia Thoris. So I think that's where they were going, but it only lasted one season. Anyway, Tars and the Epic Adventures. Apparently you can get that on Amazon Prime and, and Tubby to be Tubby to be TV or however it's pronounced. I don't know. So I haven't watched it since '96, so I'm gonna go back and look at that. Because I'm a big fan of Edgar Rice Burroughs and Tarzan. Anyway. anyway, you know, this character, the Harlequin, was the Joker's daughter, right? And, uh, you know, that was before Harley Quinn. So, uh, this is interesting. Anyway, uh, just stuff I'm going to read. Nothing amazing or awesome. This is a secret. I like Secret Origins. Always liked it going back to whenever it started, about 72 or whatever. Here's some, uh, here's some beat up shit. A jughead uh, that I got recently. Here's uh, I need to do a live stream, man, because uh, I'm paying for StreamYard. They pulled another $25 out of our bank the other day that we couldn't afford to lose. And I haven't done a live stream in over a week, and it's a waste of money. But I've been doing these, these uh, canned episodes. I don't know what, this is just something called Monster Massacre. It has different artists in it. I thought it... This is something I got recently. Do you know anything about it? Here's a comic they'd give you if you were flying on an airplane. On uh, American Airlines, they'd give kids this to shut them up. I seem to remember getting one on an airplane once, and, and I don't know why... I didn't, I don't have it. It's got a certificate, you know, that you were on an airplane. But it's got, you know, all the typical Harvey comics. There's a... There's a Donald Trump. Richie Rich's dad looked like Donald Trump, and I'm the only one that ever even talks about that. Why, why do other people not realize that? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Little things like this make me happy. And you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Some of you have seen that, unfortunately. But I wonder what that's going to be when you uh, connect the dots. It's hard to, hard to imagine. Yeah, I still haven't ordered anything from Lance Jones. Apparently all the horror stuff is on sale for uh, Halloween season, so I gotta, I gotta get those uh, Famous Monsters first 20 issues, man. I, I gotta do it. But... There's a... Uh, Casper is back. This is a beat-up special collector's edition <laughs> issue. Ugh. This bag is needs to be thrown away. So I will not rebag it in this. Yeah, man, this comic is like uh, been shredded, but. Um, Now you can watch your favorite cartoon characters on video cassette. I hear that Walmart's about to get some uh, Harvey uh, collections on uh, DVD or Blu-ray. I try to avoid that shithole, but they're supposedly going to be in the stores soon if they're not already there. 
collections of the stuff from, uh, I guess, from the 60s, you know, when they had not the not the classic famous studios cartoons that but the ones that had the whole cast here's little lotta number 77 casper and nightmare number 38 Here's a, a later period hot stuff. This snowman isn't so hot. That's kind of cool to create a flame man. Yeah, you know, stuff. Donald Duck. With uh, these old Uncle Scrooge reprints. Speed up old comics, but they're fun to read. <sighs> now they are at the complaint department. I'm gonna take this old bag off this thing. This is a, oh no, it's two books. What? There's, there were two books in the bag. What? The hell? <laughs> Behind that book was a copy of Thor. Return to Wondagore, number 406. How strange. Um, yeah, this is uh, strange. This is issue 406. Not a very good, good uh, condition copy of it, but... Uh, but yeah, I don't know why there were two comics in that bag. Yeah, I picked up that, uh, I picked up this for, you know, hardly you know, less than a buck, and there's a Thor comic in the same bag. I was thinking these, uh, this introduces the famous Sam the Clan. You can make some taffy. Oh, I can't hold the camera very well. Yeah, there's Sam the Clam. Hold on. How do I do this? Ultra Chrome Smash Up Derby. Why would you put Chrome on a car you're smashing up? We've been looking at some houses for sale in other states, and you look up the town on YouTube, and the only thing the town has is smash up is is uh, demolition derbies. That's how the, that's their entertainment. I'm thinking that sounds like a great town to live in, where your main fun is demolition derbies and maybe Friday night football games for the local high school. A town so small that it's like that. That seems like the right town to be in in this particular uh, political climate. These are uh, cloth patches. Uh, 
Yeah, patches used to be the thing back in the 70s. It's weird in a comic book that's, uh, I've always thought, well, that's cool, they have Flash Gordon. Some of them, you know, it's weird that you got a Playboy bunny in a, a patch for sale in a kid's comic, but... War is not healthy for children and other living things. There's Mr. Natural. Okay, Sam the Clam's debut. Here is a third printing of the tick number one. Featuring the first appearance of the tick friend of mine was always telling me back in the 80s that I should read The Tick and I would ignore him and then that Tick cartoon started on uh, Fox I believe and then I thought wow this, this cartoon is great and then I became interested in this comic I, I didn't believe him that it was so good actually I think that the, the I think that that uh Honestly, the, the cartoon that was on Saturday mornings might have been better than the comic, but I may be wrong. Man, there's little tape residue on this Thor comic, like little, little bits of uh, stickiness that I feel will rub off. And I got this uh, issue of hate, hate number nine. I may already have it. I thought I had a complete run of hate, but not sure. Uh, okay. Oh, I was just at a, there was a, I used to walk my dog Daisy, my beloved dog Daisy who passed away like 10 years ago, and there was a little old lady in a little scooter cart that would always be out, you know, letting her dog, uh, walking her dog in her yard. She was a very elderly lady, and, uh, and I would talk to her, and, and the dogs seemed to like each other, and she said, dogs are just like people, and, uh, Anyway, then later there was an estate sale at her house, and she, obviously she passed away. And I remember it's about nine years ago. It was all kinds of Coca-Cola paraphernalia and, and, and Star Wars stuff. And apparently, it was the son-in-law, I, I, some grandson. I don't know, but uh, some of the stuff. But uh, today there was a garage sale at that same house. I, I passed by. And uh, they didn't have much there, but tomorrow, the supposedly, they're going to have some records out. They just had Lawrence Welk records today, pretty much. Nothing fascinating. So, uh, I was talking to the guy, and apparently that, the lady that I used to talk to, the elderly lady, was his mother-in-law. And this guy looked, uh, kind of, was, was older, too. But I got this book. For like nothing. It, it looks very interesting. The Beginner's Book of American History. I like the artwork. I'll show you. It um, uh, it looks like it'd be fun to read. Um. Look at that, Davy Crockett. It reminds me of those great uh, 
books about Greek mythology and Norse mythology that the Dealers um, put out back in the 50s or whenever. I just like the art. There's Robert E. Lee that I'm supposed to be related to. I need to go through that comic journal box over there because uh, apparently I remember the, you know the first uh, appearance of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is in the comics journal and so that issue is worth a lot of money now and I know I have it in that box that might be interesting to somebody out there yeah the artwork in here is fantastic the, the uh, dust jacket is in crummy shape it's got a torn part there but it's just great and it's going to provide me with hours of entertainment oh and then oh at that estate sale yesterday, I also got this big version of Tootle, which is uh, one of those golden books. But this is a big golden book. I always like trains and Tootle and, you know, the pokey little puppy and all those characters. So anyway, this is a 1965 edition. This is my kind of stuff. This was just 50 cents. You imagine? 50 cents all day, any day. Anyway, this is how I take my mind off the fact that the um, world seems to be falling apart. Let's see, what can I entertain you with? Here's my Frankenstein stuff. I don't come in this room as much anymore, but I need to start. So, uh, you know, I probably need to take a shower here. Um, let me see if there's anything else in this box that would entertain you. If I just end this episode now, it won't get any views because whenever I do an episode that's an hour long, hardly anybody watches it. People want longer episodes, apparently. Ah, uh, shit. Let's see what else we can find here. High School Confidential Diary. Hop on Cassidy. Oh, here's the first issue of Hot Stuff. The Little Devil. History. I'm Hot Stuff. Who are you? Which may be the origin of Bart Simpson's catchphrase. Got tons of hot stuff comics. Yeesh. That thing's been. What the fuck? This book has been in bad condition. Why would I have bought something that has been. had a bite taken out of it? Oh. I got it for $4. I just can't believe I bought it. Um. Uh, That's a great cover. That's a fantastic cover. Tons of hot stuff. There's Dial H for Hero. House of Mystery. I don't have many of these old House of Mysteries though. some of this stuff. There's Jumbo Comics number 
something. The number's been torn up. I wonder if I had that Justice League I was talking about the other day, where they're being led into... Yeah, here we go. This is the one I was talking about on Wednesday night's broadcast. They're uh, actually not being enslaved, they're being forced onto a ship to uh, leave. They didn't really color in Wonder Woman's uh, pants, it just looks like they're white. It probably couldn't. It's probably too too small to uh, get the. Uh... Oh, that's interesting because if you look down here, it looks like the Justice League are are really there. Like there's Barry Allen, and I haven't read this in years. Yeah, you see the their secret identities. Oh well. That is Justice League number 19. Lots of old Justice Leagues. King, King Leonardo, Korak. Okay. Well... out because now I don't know what to do with Okay, so yeah, everything. This this room is just in a state of chaos. Um, and uh, eventually it'll be in better shape, but. Kind of limited in what I can do right now. Um, the cool thing, if this was a live stream, when I get tired, I can just rely on people popping on that I can talk to and have a conversation with. But I don't have much to say right now, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and end this episode because I'm just tired and I need to take a shower. But anyway, it's been nice to spend Friday for a Friday evening with you, and. Um, I'll, um, maybe I'll go watch Nerd Rotic or something. Take care, guys.